Hello, Micron fans, and welcome to this replay cast. Vacron, I'm Shadow Fury 3 This is a match between Chitin and Kron Aberrant. Chitin is in the bottom left corner, currently choosing his race, and he is going to be going Vekir. Though right now setting up his perfect start. And this is on EXP version 1.2, EXP B version 1.2. This is the one that I was working on. And in case you hadn't been keeping up with the latest casts, the main changes are that resource processors are now 100 liquid crystal to build. They have doubled the harvest rate, however, so it's the same amount of harvest rate per cost. And for Vekir, they also get Calm Jam on their Teth Turchers rather than Zion Halcyons. And some of the recovery and shield breaking abilities have been shifted around a bit, but otherwise there's no real change. And, oh, should say, except for the fact that there are two Zion Veer. That is one big change which I'm not sure if Kaiden is totally aware of or using. Now, Kron on the other hand, has not chosen his race yet. I think he might have been taking a bit longer to load. Unfortunately, with the current version, there is a bit of a bug where you won't necessarily always get in right as the game starts. The next version, the update that will be coming out pretty soon, that will fix that. So don't worry, that's, that's a bug that's known, that's been fixed, so it's... Just, it is affecting this game, however. So, Crown Aberrant, that's probably what's happening here. And so once he actually gets up, then we'll see what's going on. So Kaiden is just sending out his Zionbeer and Shinbeer out to scout, and keeping one of his Zionbeers at home to build RPs, and there we go, Crown Aberrant has come in. So now he should start choosing his race and figuring out what to do. Probably going to be going for Grekum, since he always goes for Grekum. I'd almost be surprised if he wasn't. That's really all I gotta say about that one. That would be kind of neat if he did try other races, but no, he is going for Grekum. That's exactly right. So, getting his start going, getting his initial Faro, and of course Grekum has the fewest changes. It has... the only real change is that it has one resource processor instead of two in order to compensate for the fact that resource processors are twice as effective. And it has two Seppies instead of one, because Grekum always had a hard time scouting, so having two Seppies is a bit of an advantage. Kronemmer was also doing some... he was the first person to do the experimental mod, and this is one of the changes he did. He asked that I threw it in here, and I did. So, it's worked out pretty well. So far, we've been doing a fair amount of tests with this, and they have worked out fairly well. They do demonstrate, and we'll probably see in this game, how the change with the resource processors, making them more expensive, actually cuts down on the hyper-expansion problem quite a bit. So, just worth pointing out. We'll see exactly how it works in this game, if people do expand a lot, or if they stay in one base. And honestly, if it is just one base, then it might be worth making the resource processors a bit weaker, just slightly, just to encourage a bit more expansion. So you're not just saturating one base and being able to run the entire game off that. But it is also... it's a tricky balance point. Anyhow, we see that Vikran... sorry, not Vikran. We don't see Vikran here. If we saw Vikran here, I'm sure we'd see hyper expansion no matter what's going on. But Kitan, on the other hand, is sending his... He's still getting his Shinvir and Zyanvir over to Kronemar's base. They are still on their way, and they won't really see anything yet. Kronamon, of course, has to be about four minutes down because he's just managing his start, getting everything set up because he got in a bit later. And he's very, seems to be very keen on controlling right next to the unplayable pass rather than, fast, well, he is fast forwarding, but rather than jumping forward. And it's a bit tricky, mind you, to manage it as you jump forward and not knowing how much you have with resources and such. So it's probably fine the way he's doing it now. Kaiden, on the other hand, is meeting up with the race picker. Or species selectors is more officially called, and we'll be fighting that for no real reason. We will see once the red time comes along what he's actually up against, and we already know it's Grekum, but Kitan does not. So Kitan has actually been in the dark what Kron Amaranth's up to. I'm sure he's probably guessed that Kron Amaranth is going for Grekum, however, since like I said, Kron Amaranth always goes Grekum. And he is setting up some foundations as well, one of them becoming an aerial control center, so he will have an aerial control center about 5 minutes 40 seconds into the game, assuming he doesn't change that, which he probably... Well, he might. He probably won't. But we'll see. Anyway, Crown Aberrant has sent his Seppi as well, so this is the earliest encounter that players will have at the E224 mark. The Seppi will run into the Shinvir and Zionvir, which will start fighting it, taking on, and will take it down, because Seppis don't last very long against ground units that are actually fighting them. Seppis are anti-air units primarily, so they can't do a huge amount of damage to ground units. They tend to die first. But it should be able to deal at least some damage. It does actually take the Zionvir down to half health, which is impressive. Kitan, on the other hand, is... well, he still hasn't seen this happen, actually. He he is at the point where Kronamert 
The time of Sephiroth get it ever. Actually, he's jumped back to the 230 mark to when this battle occurs, so he's just seeing the Seppi go along. And Cronomer's actually changed the Seppi around. He's moving the Seppi towards Titan's base. He's not having it attack. He's not having it engage. This is the best option. Seppis are, like I said, anti-air units. Don't fight ground units with them. If you can avoid it, don't fight ground units with them. There's really no point trying. So this is Kitan back at the 5.6. So Kitan is just jumping back and forth, just double checking his build, double checking where his units are and what's going on. Since on the green time wave we will have the Seppi come in and start deal damage, probably around he. Well, actually, I'm a bit surprised he hasn't. We haven't seen any damage bars come up yet for that Seppi. Ah, that's why Cronaver is not actually going to the main base. He is in fact setting up a tri or a duo with a Faro, presumably, over at the south expansion over here. Proxy duo, not a bad idea. So he is not scouting with that. And I wonder if Kitan is suspecting it's something because he hasn't seen the Seppi actually hit anything yet. He hasn't seen any attacks. Doesn't really know what's going on. He is, however, coming back to the base. I think he is suspicious. He is coming back to the to the natural expansion, so he might be able to catch that Seppi. But I don't think so. We don't see any damage bars because of it, so I don't think the Seppi is in danger at all. I think the Seppi will be able to build that duo. And two reefs are being built in Cronhammer's main base as well, so he is starting to do his typical bubble wrap. And it's not a bad idea because it does hide the fact that he is going for a proxy here with... Oh, it's an Octo. Okay. So it's an Octo and a Seppi going for a proxy. Probably going to just build a Faro from here and have a full triad to do the proxy from. I would not be surprised if he decided to use that to build up air units. Like, get... Get advanced structures at these reefs, build a spire over here, and then use that to make air units right next to Kitan's base, instead of having the air units come all the way from his base. Mind you, even on a map like this, it's not that it's not that long for air units, but hey, why not have the proxy, I suppose. Kitan is not aware of it from the looks of it. He is, however, he does appear to be sus no, he's not suspicious, he's just sending his Zion Beer along. I'm gonna double check how that Zion Beer went through, however. He's jumped back to the 314 mark, this is the unplayable pass, by the way. And he doesn't seem to have actually noticed the Seppi. I think he's probably a bit suspicious, but I don't see him actually sending his Zynvir. No, his Zynvir is not going past this proxy, which is starting to build Faros. Actually, quite a few Faros. Yes, that's <laughs> that's kind of scary, actually. I gotta, I gotta be honest, that's pretty scary. Four Faros coming in. Well, one Faro going straight to the base. The other three Faros seem to be just staying in where they started. Staying in their birthplace. Nothing going from there. So, this is also the time that Kitan was hitting with his forces originally. Crown Emirate, his main base, is going to be attacked, but it won't take any real damage. The reefs are going to heal it up way too much for it to matter. And here's the Faro coming in, going to regenerate, making more Octos. This is pretty scary. So, Crown Emirate has a decently large base class army right next to Kitan's base and hasn't actually done anything with it yet. Let's see. The Shinbeer hitting the main base. Nothing new here. So that's what we saw before with the harassment. What we didn't see before is... Oh, wow. Oh, that is unfortunate. Skipping Zion Pulsers... Actually, go back to Kitan's view. So Kitan has actually sent in a bunch of Zion Pulsers. Three Zion Pulsers and... No. Shin Turcher, Zion Turcher, two Zion Pulsers teleporting in towards Cronhammer's base. While at the same time, Cronhammer is sending in a massive force of base class units to attack the main base. So both players are heavily sieging each other, but it looks like Cronhammer will be hitting first. However, Kitan has tons of Zion... Has, okay, not tons. Four Zion Pulsers, which is actually a fair amount of Zion Pulsers for Vecchier. He has four Zion Pulsers in here, defending the base. It looks like he's jumping back to when he first got skip teleport for his units. Probably not going to be fast forward... Or, he's not fast forward right now, it's slow-mo. But he's not going to be going through with that attack, I don't think. But we'll see. He is definitely aware that something is up. Not sure, you know, he's not changing around his attack plan from the looks of it. And this depot is telling everyone to hierarchy to that Zion Turcher. So, this will be interesting. And of course, these are the Zion Pulses that we saw that are being built that will be defending against the Grecum units coming in from Cronhammer's point of view. Cronhammer, from we can see the actual. Actually, went pretty poorly. Let's just watch from Kitan's point of view. It's more exciting to watch the battle itself. So, Kitan now in a better spot. Taking out two of the Octos. A bunch of Octos going around the south side with the Faros. Uh, Seppi's going from the east as a decoy, doing a quite good job as a decoy. Cranmer's point of view, this is when we continue the battle, and it looks like... It looks like Kitan will successfully defend, but will lose a couple of his Zion Pulsers in the process. They will go back to Zion Veers, and... Well, the Veers will eject. So the Veers are fine, but the Pulsers have been destroyed. So we see Cranmer is... He is going straight for the back here. 
He's not even going up to the vehicles anymore. He's sending his Octos straight towards the back, straight towards the resource processors. We'll be dealing quite a bit of damage once they get in. So, bypassing the Zion Pulsers entirely, Kitan is not quite aware of this change. The Octos are doing a fair amount of damage to these RPs, closing two of them. Three, three RPs, so a third of the LCRPs that Kitan has have been closed up. I'm sorry, not a third. Kitan does expand. Okay, so Kitan, there is some expansion going on. That's good to see. But a third of the main base RPs have been closed up, and Kitan has jumped back to help change this, but hasn't actually changed it yet. However, this does mean that he keeps these Zion Pulsers around, which is good. However, it will be difficult to defend with the Zion Pulsers. They will likely damage the, well, they will damage the resource processors if they try to defend the resource processors. But it looks like Kitan is going to be targeting this bottom side here, but not as well as he could be. Looks like not as many Octos got into the back. Only two Octos got in the back instead of three, but it's still a fair amount of damage being dealt. And it looks like two of the RPs are closed up, and Kitan is going to risk it. He is going to risk damage, destroying his own RPs to get rid of these Octos, and it looks like one of his RPs will... Oh, he's jumping back a bit. Well, okay, well, now we'll see what happens. So Kitan is risking his RPs to defend against these Octos, and it looks like one of the RPs will go down. So he is destroying one of his own RPs, but he at least saved the other. I mean, he saved some of them. But... No, he is saving both. He is going to be able to teleport both of them away and save both of them. However, in the process, closing one of his. So he's still took some economic damage, but he managed to mitigate it quite a bit, which is well done. Cronaver, from his point of view, at, actually, let's double checking, this is the 927 mark. This damage has been actually undone by the Zion Pulsers in question. So, Cronaver, jumping back to this battle, he does not have any real way out of this. So, let's see. He does have a Spire, however, in his main base. He has a Spire, he has Octopods being set up, and he is getting Chronoporting as well. So, he's getting himself ready to start throwing some, probably, uppercuts around. In case you don't know, uppercuts being the unplayable past attacks. This is the unplayable past. And if you chronoport back units and Q orders, they will execute them in the past. Getting a Faro pod, not surprising. And actually getting Faro pod and a Sippy pod built up really quickly. While well, Kitan, of course, has his expansion down here and has a South Ex He has himself set up to take the South Expansion with a Shin Beer, but he's not actually taking it. And it looks like we see a Faro pod. Oh, Sepi pod actually has come in and will be attacking the Shin Beer. The rest of the forces are kind of going around and aren't really dealing with it. However, the Shin Torture will be engaging, will be able to take... Actually, will be able to take it out because it's distracted by the Shin Beer. And let's see. No, the Shin Torture might actually have a really hard time. I think it might go down. Hard to say, but it looks like it's going to be going down. Kitan has jumped back a couple minutes. Sorry, no, he's jumped back a minute or so from when this attack happened. And the, the Seppi Pod is right here. The Seppi Pod we're looking at. Kitan jumping back again. Crime from his point of view, however, this is when we saw the attack happening before. So the Seppi Pod has come into range of attack, and it looks like Kitan is moving away his forces. He won't be engaging the Seppi Pod directly, which is fine. The Seppi Pod is an anti-air unit, and he does not want to be sending his bomber to Shin Turcher over to deal with it. That'd be very unwise. You know, they are cool units. They are not that great at doing any anti-air damage. So, sensible move. Definitely agree with that. However, Kitan, from his point of view, he doesn't have any Teth Turchers. He doesn't have any being built. He... Sorry, he has one being built now. That's good. Two, two Teth Turchers, one Teth Pulsar, and Chronoporting. So both players have Chronoporting now. Chronomer is the first person to use it. Chronoporting back a Pharopod into the back of Kitan's base. So this is going to be very powerful. So this is the Pharopod in question, I believe. Yes, that is the Pharopod in question. So a Shin Turcher will actually be able to get rid of it, and it looks like... Oh! Oh, that is painful! Running away with 12 health. It's not quite in the best position, but it's not dead either. So, wow, that's close. That is harsh, though. So the Farbot will be able to deal some damage, but not as much as it could have dealt had it not been damaged like that. However, Sippy Body is coming back here, and it probably will chronoport back as well. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it chronoported back. Kitan, from his point of view, is going to be sending in... He's sending in a lot of forces, actually. Getting more Teth Turchers and Shin Turchers. Very focused on the Turcher line. While Crown Aberrant sends back a Sebi Pod to deal with... Well, deal with what's there. It looks like there's a Shin Turcher back, back there, which will be dealt with. Crown Aberrant, as his base, he has... Oh, wow. He's actually getting ready for Legal Class. He has some... He has Legal Class researched. He has some Pod units in progeneration mode, so he is going to be getting legal class as soon as he can. Now, Kitan, on the other hand, does not have Halcyon class. He does have Chrono well, Gate Tech of his own, but he seems to be primarily using it to teleport a lot and sending in... Speaking of teleporting, teleporting a ton of a massive army into Chronomer's base to deal with it. 
this could be it. I think this is going to be the game. And... This is going to be the game, and... I... Unless... Well, okay, to be fair, Chronomart did Chronoport, so unless Chronomart can... Chronoport did a really great job of dealing with this. From his point of view, Chronomart... He does have a couple Chronoports back when Kitan is looking, and... There's no real damage being caused by them, so Kitan actually double-checked, and it looks like this may be the end. However, Chronomart is doing a valiant job defending, and he will be able to hold off this attack for at least a little bit longer. However, his Steppy Paws are going down quickly. No, he is... He is going down. He might be able to build up some stuff to deal with this, but unless that Chronoport did enough damage, and it looks like it might have. That Chronoport actually, back here, there's a Chronoport here that looks like it may have dealt enough damage to stop. Yes, it is actually stopping the attack. See in the green time wave that the attack is dealing less damage, though not no damage. Titan is still dealing some damage. You see the army that, well, Chronoport's at the presence, but there appears to be, oh, nice, two slip gates as well. So Chronoport, isn't the only one with chronoporting now. Kitan has the ability to chronoport his units as well, and also teleport them directly into Chronoport's base, which is what I'm sure he's planning on doing. Now, Chronoport is surprisingly just hanging out in the present, actually in the future. Ah, here we are. Defensive chronoport, so sending back some Far Legos from the future. And this is also when we had the, that original uppercut that I mentioned before with the base attack. And it looks like Kitan is... He is also hanging out in the Unplayable Pass, double-checking what's going on. And he doesn't see any real damage going on here, but of course we can see in the green time wave, like I said, less damage being dealt. Still the attack is happening. We haven't seen the defensive chronoport. Ah, here we are. So Kitan has jumped to the point where there is a defensive chronoport coming in. We have the Sebi Paws fighting alongside themselves and not doing a bad job of stopping the forces coming in. So Chronomer, from his point of view, we see he is also in the Unplayable Pass, double checking this attack. Doubling his Sebi Paws knockabout numbers, but it looks like it's still to no avail. Kitan, we see from his... We see that Kaiden does not appear to notice this. It might be that he's too far ahead. The blue time wave could change things. But from what we can tell, Kaiden is definitely taking this out. Actually, Kaiden is in a really bad spot right now because his base is being heavily damaged by Kaiden. So unless he's able to successfully defend against this with all these units he chronoported back and re chronoported back, he's going to have a very hard time actually taking this out and preventing his base from being ultimately destroyed. Yes, he is defeated at 1441. This is at the 1327 mark, however, so he might be able to defend against this. No, he is in a really bad spot. Never mind. He does not have Freeze, unfortunately. He does not have specials. With Freeze, he would have probably been able to actually live, to be honest. Ted Searchers don't have Recover. They have Calm Jam, and Shin Pulsers are the ones with Recovery. Or, yes, that's right. Shin Pulsers have Recover, so no Shin Pulsers means no Recovery. For, I should say, in vanilla, Ted Searchers have the Recovery ability, whereas, eh, Nice. So, Chronoported Shin Turcher as well from Kitan. So yeah, I should point out, in vanilla, Ted Turchers have Recover. In EXPB, they have Calm Jam. The Shin Pulsers have the Recover in EXPB, and Ted Pulsers have the Shin Pulsers Shield Break. Though, no one ever really used TSS before, so I don't know how many people are aware that Shield Break even existed. Anyway, Kitan double-checking. The green time wave is appearing to change things, actually. Though, in Kitan's favor, he is dealing quite a bit of damage. Carnivore... Because, like I said, the, blue, the cyan here is going to be the damage from Chitin. So Chitin is dealing a lot of damage to Chronomar, and it looks like this is... No, Chronomar, very valiant ever chronoporting back, but I don't see him actually successfully defending his base, even with the defensive chronoports. And yeah, they've been kind of paradoxed out, actually. We see them jumping in on the timeline, the yellow bars here. They're kind of being paradoxed out, so I don't see how he could get out of this. No, he is, he is in a bad spot, so I don't think... I think Chronomar will be done once the base destruction falls off the timeline. So, this is the base destruction at the 14... Well, 1441 is when it was actually completed. So I think once that falls off the timeline, we'll see what goes on, but... Chronomart might have a chance to save himself, or just move his units out of the way, get himself out of his main base, and not completely lose out. Incidentally, this is a good reason to expand. <laughs> to avoid this single damage... Single point of failure, essentially. You lose one base, and then you lose the entire game. Just throwing that out there. Though I still think it looks like the economy may have been made a little bit stronger than I would have liked, but, eh, it works. I mean, it works that I can change it, so that's fine. We'll have to see what happens. I'm planning on making the resource processors actually harvest 8 per cycle instead of 10 per cycle. Slow it down just slightly. I think that will make it a nice balance between expansion being useful and staying in one base being something you can survive by doing. 
But Kitan, like I said, has expanded, and he is he has a massive amount of money. He's not even spending half of it. Crown on the other hand, is in the future. The destruction of his base has not carried over to the future, and he's trying to chrono He is trying to do some defensive chronoports. No, that's Kitan's chronoports, my mistake. Yeah, Chronobrant actually has gotten some Chronoports hitting in, but what damage they're dealing may be futile. It looks like there's... This is still happening after the 1441 mark. And Chitin double-checking the damage. No, there's there's nothing here. So Chronobrant, very valiant effort, but it looks like he did in fact lose out. So this is basically the point where the, the base was destroyed. There are some slight changes happening on the blue time wave, though. Neither player is actually looking at that, but it looks like Crimer is taking a bit less damage. He does actually have a couple Seppi Pods that are coming in, but nope, no, he's he's gone. So that was, well, that was a game that really showed why expansion can be useful, even if you don't necessarily need it for economy, at the very least to keep yourself from falling because one base goes down. It's a common thing before to remember to do, is to have multiple bases so you can chronoport around to each other. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed that, and that was certainly a most chronoporting heavy game I've seen in a very long time. And yeah, that was the game. So I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.